Hello everyone. Welcome to the video lecture series of data structure. Our today's topic is application of stack and in this application of stack we are going to learn about the recursive application that is known as Tower of Hanoi. Hi, this is your instructor Janice Shah. So let's begin with the today's first topic that is known as Tower of Hanoi. Students, Tower of Hanoi was nothing, it's a game which we used to play in our childhood. If you remember that you must play this game, that you have one, three roads over there, you just need to place a smaller ring above the bigger ring. And the rule is that you cannot place a bigger ring on the smaller ring. Okay, so this is a normal game that we used to play this in which we just need to move our rings from one pole to the source pole to the destination pole. Okay, so here what is our problem? Our problem is to move all the rings from the source pole A to destination pole C. So here two rules, we need to focus on the two rules of the Tower of Hanoi. The rule number one is that at a time students, you can move only one disc or only one ring. If you have this is a pole. If I have the one larger ring over there, then the medium ring and the smallest ring above it. Okay. So this is my pole ready with the all rings of the Tower of Hanoi. Then from this particular source pole, I need to move all these three rings to the destination pole. But during the moving of these three rings from the source pole to destination pole, we need to take care of these two different rules. So rule number one is that student, you can move or you can do perform only one step at a time. And second is that you cannot place the larger disc on the smaller disc or we can say the larger ring on the smaller ring. Fine. So just take care of these two different basic rules of the Tower of Hanai and let's start to understand it real good. So as this is a recursive algorithm, this is a part of the recursion example, okay. You know that each and every recursion function has two different cases. The one is a base case, second is a recursive case. In the base case, that means the algorithm stops at one point. That we already know that in the factorial program, if n is equal to 1, then you used to write return 1. So this is a base case of the factorial. Else part is that else return n into fact of m minus 1. So this is the recursive of the factorial algorithm or we can say the factorial function. So what we need to do over here, we just need to focus on our base case and recursive case. So always remember your each and every recursion function must contain the two different cases, the number 1 is a base case and number 2 is a recursive case. So what is our base case over here students? If your n is equal to 1, n represents the number of rings in the pole or we can say the number of disks in the pole. Fine. So for us right now, if the n is equal to 1 students, if the n is equal to 1, then we can easily say that you just need to move your ring from source pole A to destination pole C. Here we have three different poles like pole A, pole B and pole C. So here is the example of the tower of an eye. Here in this figure you can say that sir we have three different poles. Okay. A, B and C. These poles are known as the towers. These problems is solved by the Hanoi. That's why it's known as the tower of the Hanoi. Here we have the three disks. You can see over here in the figure that the larger above it's a middle disk, above it's a very smaller disk. It is not necessary that to elaborate the example of the Tower of Hanoi, you need to take only the three disk. You can take the example of four, five, six, seven, whatever you want. But the steps are increasing. The steps to solve the Tower of Hanoi in the efficient manner, it will be increasing the number of disk. So, sir. How many steps it will take to solve the Tower of Hanoi problem with the number of disk 3 that I'll tell you later. Okay, so what we just need to understand over here that how the algorithm recursive case works. Okay students, so let's understand the very first line. How you can do 
solve this tower of Hanoi problem using recursion. So the first move is that you just need to move your n minus one d. See here we have source pole A. Okay, then middle we have the intermediate pole B and the destination pole C. Okay, so what we need to do? We have three different poles. What is our goal? Our goal is to send or transfer all these three discs from the no pole A to pole C. So how it doesn't matter whatever the number of the discs are there in the pole. You just need to focus on these particular three steps. The number one step is that you need to move your n minus one disc. You need to move your n minus one disc from source pole A to destination pole C. No. Yes, you need to move your n minus one days from source pole A to destination pole B. Okay, not C. The very first step is to send n minus one days from source pole A to destination pole B. At the time to apply this operation or to perform this operation, we use C as an intermediate pole. Now the second step. As you have already transferred the n minus one rings from pole A to pole B, so only one ring is left. Correct? So you just need to transfer this one ring directly from A to C. But to perform these operations, students, you have to take node B as an intermediate pole. Fine. Now the third and the last step is. N minus one rings. So you need to transfer the n minus one rings from pole B to pole C by using pole A as an intermediate pole. Okay. So, sir, what do we mean? What do you mean by the intermediate pole? So, sir, when intermediate pole, that means here we have the source pole and destination pole. In our regular example, we have A as our source pole. In the C as our destination pole, but during the recursive cases, it might be possible that you need to take A as an intermediate or B as an intermediate or C as an intermediate. It might be possible the source and destination pole will be changed. So for that, we take over here the steps are only three simple steps. The number one is to move n minus one rings from A to B by using C as an intermediate pole. Number two is move one left ring from A to C by using B as an intermediate pole. And number three is move n minus one rings. Move n minus one rings from B to C by using A as an intermediate pole. Fine. So let's understand the in better way with example. Students, this is my first case. I am going to take an example that if I have only one ring in my tower of Hanoi. So here, this is my pole A, this is my pole B, and this is my pole C. What we have? A we consider A as our source pole, B as our intermediate pole, C as our destination pole. Students, so this is very much simple step. If I want to move the ring from A to C, then how can I perform it? Because only one ring is there. You can directly move that particular ring from A to C. So here it is. Only one single step you can perform it. So we just need to move ring from A to C. So finally, our ring is reached to its destination when n is equal to one. Now, second step. Just imagine this is the second example. If n is equal to two, then how many step it will take? Okay. So here we have the n is equal to two. So again, let me start with the source pole with the two rings. See, so you can easily say the lower ring is the largest. Above it, I put down a smaller disc in the source pole A. So just think about the algorithm. What we need to do it? We just need to send n minus one ring from source pole A to destination pole B. Okay, I'm gonna do it. Okay, so here it. First step is send. A to B. Okay. So here it is. I'm just sending my ring from A to B. Okay. Now step number two. Step number two. Just in, just remember the step number two is that move 
move one left ring from A to C. Okay, I'm gonna do that. So one left ring is that A to C. So from A to C, the larger ring is moved from A to C. Now, now third number is just move n minus one rings from B to C by using A. But here we have only two rings, so it doesn't matter. We can directly move our ring from intermediate pole B to destination pole C. So I'm just gonna do the step is B to C and that's final. So in just three steps, in just three steps, I can perform this operation when n is equal to 2. I have directly sent the all disk or all rings from source pole A to destination pole C over here. Fine. So it will take or it takes only three steps. Let's understand the next one is in a better way for the n is equal to 3. Usually you have to write this n is equal to 3 example in your exams because we need to elaborate the tower of Hanoi with its algorithm, with the problem, with the solutions and then with this example. Okay, so what happens when n is equal to 3? Okay, so students, when n is equal to 3, what do you need to focus on it? That you just need to perform the very first step that is send n minus 1 rings from A to B by using C. So what is my goal? Well, my goal is to send A to B all n minus 1 rings, that means first two rings. I need to send first two rings from A to B. Now, let me take the very first step from A to B. I want to move my larger ring, okay, the first ring, first ring, okay, I can take only the one ring at a time. So my first ring, smallest ring from A to destination pole B. So just imagine I have just put down from A to B. Step is done. Okay, now, second step that I want to perform is, I need to send the ring from A to C. Okay, now I need to send the middle of the ring from A to C. Now again C to B, is that possible? No. Why? We need to focus on that. We can place only the smaller disk on the form of larger disk. So we cannot put a larger disk on smaller disk. That's why I need to stop over here. I can perform only one step and that is move from A to C. So my first smaller disk will move from A to C. Now, next step. After moving disk from A to C, let me just move my intermediate, that is that ring from A to B. This is my second step of this algorithm. When n is equal to 3, I just need to move my ring from A to B. So here you can see, we have the three different rings. The largest ring in A, intermediate ring in B, the smallest ring in C pole. Now, what to do? Our goal is to perform in step number one of the algorithm. Our goal is to perform send n minus one rings from A to B with the help of C. And we are going to do that. See, here now the next step will be C to B. C to B. Sure it is. Next step is C to B. Now my smaller disk is going to be placed on the intermediate disk that is C to B. Okay. So see, now my all rules are correct over here. I am not violating any rule of the tower of I because in the intermediate pole B or in the middle pole B, the my smaller disk is above on the larger disk. So all rules are perfectly working over here. Okay, so this is a correct step. Now, now the second number of the second number step. What we need to do? We just need to move our one left ring from A to C. So I'm going to do that. I'm just moving my one left ring from A to C directly. So after performing this step, what is our last step of the tower of Hanoi? Students, our last step of the tower of Hanoi is to move our n minus one rings from B to C. Okay, so let's do it. I'm just I'm just moving my smaller disk, the top smaller disk from B to C. Just imagine a situation. After moving it, C has larger disk, C has the smallest disk on it. Now, what happens with the middle of the disk? The disk which contains the middle size, what happens with it? 
I cannot move it anywhere because I cannot place the middle disc on smallest disc. That's why the wait for a minute. I need to use a pole to transfer this all n minus one disc from B to C. Okay. So what what gonna happen over here? Here, if you can see the n minus one, the smallest disc again move to the A. So the operation name is C to A. Sorry, B to A. You have to show this operations on the arrow in exams also. Okay. So do not forget to write like this that you need to show this like B to A. So I am performing it, moving my disc from B to A. Now after that, students, after that, what we have? Largest disc in the C, middle disc in the B, the smallest disc in the A. So what I need to do? I just need to move my middle disc from B to C. That is my next step, B to C. So I'm doing that. Now only one ring left, the smallest disc in A. So what I need to do is I can directly move from A to C. So these are the very efficient steps. Your algorithm is completed in I think so seven steps. Okay, one first A to C, second A to B, third C to B, fourth is A to C, fifth B to A, sixth B to C, and seventh A to C. So in the seven steps, you can complete your whole Tower of Hanoi problem solution when n is equal to three. So what do we learn today, students? We learn the about the Tower of Hanoi problem, its algorithm, and the example. But the conclusion is that when your n is equal to one, when your n is equal to one, you need to perform only one step. When your n is equal to two, you have to perform at least three steps. And when n is equal to three, you have to perform seven steps. So in the general term, for n number of disks, you need to perform two raised to n minus one steps to complete or to solve this Tower of Hanoi problem. Fine. So that's it to all understand all about the Tower of Heroi. Do not forget to write or to remember the algorithms, its steps. Okay. Always show the n is equal to one, n is equal to two, n is equal to three steps when this problem asked in the exam. Okay. So if you have any doubt anything in this Tower of Heroi problem, then please feel free to ask me. Thank you so much.